Hey all, welcome back to another video. Uh, I don't believe, uh, I, watched the, I watched the last video and I uh, don't uh, believe there were any real errors um, in that one. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna get back into this last couple lines of code in main and hopefully finish up our analysis of this config program today. So uh, let's just get right into it. Um, this, um, this is where like, you know, we've taken all of our data, you know, we've, um, you know, we've read all of our data from the configuration files and machine file, machine definitions files or whatever in yyparse. We've, you know, massaged it, um, handled it, checked it for errors, packed it down, done a bunch of stuff, and now is where we're gonna write it out. Um, so, Let's just start with make sim links. Um, make sim link. Um, make sim links uh, rather. Um, it's just gonna make um, these um, the sim links that are in this file. So this AMD sixty four um, and machine are the only two sim links that get made. Um, oh dang it. Um, ah, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I messed up. Um, nope. Um, so, yeah, those two, um, So yeah, AMD64 is just a sim link to uh, machine, which is just in its same directory, and machine is just a sim link to the uh, particular machine uh, specific include files. Um, so that when you include like machine slash some header file in the kernel, it points to the appropriate machine include file. Um, so, yeah, that's all that that does. Uh, if I hadn't, um, made a mistake with my, uh, typing, then it would have all been a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, that's, it just makes those machine, um, sim links. Um, pretty basic stuff. Um, the make make file, on the other hand, um, is a pretty interesting um, you know file uh, fairly basic so this is actually um, the okay so what it does is I'll exit out of this is it reads um, from this sort of skeleton make file or template make file uh, make file amd64 it's located in sysarchamd64.conf um, and uh, it opens the make file in um, this directory. So um, what it does is it copies every line from this file to this file verbatim almost all the time for almost every line. The exceptions are um, when Okay, so the, it actually puts a little header, emit defs at the very beginning. So um, we can uh, we can kind of compare them. Um, so you can see at the very beginning of um, the actual make file, there's this ident sort of section. It has all of this, and then this param for max users, um, user source sys is set to s, and then these two things get set. And then you get into this comment that starts right here. Um, so that's what emit defs does. Um, yeah, it just puts ident, and then all of those like d things are just all of the options that you have 
um, in your configuration file. So like you can see um, multiprocessor, hibernate, include support for the NTFS file system, debugging, diagnostic, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and uh, okay, it also makes sure that it's not in the def op tab, but we don't use that. Um, and then yeah, it prints out this max users parameter. It also uh, append or prepends this dash d to each of them. Um, yeah, that uh, basically makes it so that if you have like, uh, it makes it so that it's defined when you uh, compile something. Um, so yeah, like if you have you know a if def line in uh, in your C file. Uh, and it's like if def ddb, then this dash d that's in front. Um, let's use a, let's use a less. If you have if def quota, then this dash d quota will make that true. Um, so yeah, mostly sane stuff there. Um, and it, you know if it has a value, it's gonna put the value after it. Um, most of them you can see don't have values. I think. The default screens is the only thing that like has a value. Um, yeah, that's mostly simple stuff. Um, but the real like meat of the program, okay. And then at the end, we put out emit reconfig if starter is non null, which it is non null. So we're gonna put out this emit reconfig, um, which you know I talked about at. Um, the sort of maybe the very first video. Uh, it's just these last like five lines and it lets you recompile um, after you've already run config um, and lets you rerun config the exact same way that you ran it when you first ran make config. Um, so yeah. The real issue is that if it sees a line that begins with a percentage sign, then it's gonna check if it's like obj, c files, s files, rules, or load, and it's gonna call the appropriate function depending on what it sees. So you can see over here in this file, we've got you know a couple lines that are just obj, c files, s files, um, load and rules at the very end. Um, so the rules, well, let's just go through them, you know, so we can know what they do. Um, and we should also do, um, we should look at um, source path on the way. So source, source path, before we get into anything else, these are helper functions. Um, it basically looks through the list of path names that, you know, each file has which we went over why it's never going to be longer than two because of that improper recursion. Um, but it looks through all of them. Um, usually it's only one. There's like maybe 10 or 12 cases where it's two. Um, and if it sees like a dollar sign followed by braces um, and it's machine or machine arch, then it will expand it into machine arch or machine. Um, that's what this expand does. Um, otherwise, it's just going to use what the actual uh, name that was given in the file line is. And it just checks that like, it just uses the uh, or returns a character pointer uh, to either the expanded file name or the original file name. Um, the first one that it has read access to. Um, and that's basically it. It also, um, once it's found the first one, it skips that whole search um, because I guess they thought that maybe they'll have, uh, <laughs> maybe they'll have like a lot of uh, files with only one or with more than one file path. Um, and so they thought they might ha be having to do this a lot, but they don't. So it you know, um, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, it basically just picks the first path 
file path that it has access to and returns it. Um, but like it doesn't even check that. If there's only one of them, it never does this you know, at all. So you can't expand the, f if there's only one thing, then you can't expand any of them. Um, and also you better make sure that it has read access because uh, it's not going to do any of these checks. Um, but in any case, um, that's source path and it gets used here in emit. So this is emit reconfig. You can see it just puts out phony uh, config and then uh, prints out this you know config line um, and just you know changes your uh, directory to the like start dir, um, right? Which is why it checks that like start dir is non null because you you know need to actually change to the correct start dir, um, and then you know puts out the p flag, s flag, and b flag, the original ones that you you had, um, and yeah, that's that's it. Um, and then the conf file at the very end, right? So this is the, the conf file. Um, so yeah, okay. Getting back to emit opj. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the first thing that it does is it checks and makes sure that you have a, like, you know, valid path. It's, this is only going to return null if something went wrong. Um, let's just double check that. Um, where is it? Yeah. Um, I don't even think it like can return null. Um, maybe it would if there were like no paths, but yeah, I'm not sure that line is super necessary in emit obj right here. But anyway, it gets used more later, so it's not uh, worthless to go over it. Um, and then this is like formatting stuff to make sure that the lines don't get too long. Um, and it just prints out the file base uh, followed by a .o um, after printing out like obj. Um, so yeah, uh, it does that for all files. All objects is empty, so that doesn't matter. And then it puts a new line at the very end. So um, you um, let's see, normal s. Hang on a sec. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, if we um, search for normal s. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, let's go. Uh, it needs to be that one. So yeah, you can see this is where obj gets put out. Um, and it's pretty long, but it's you know just a whole bunch of O files. Um, and then we're gonna do the C files, which just like all this is gonna do is um, loop through, you know, all files. Um, and oh, the other thing is that it checks and makes sure that it's actually selected, right? So we're not gonna include anything that's not selected. But yeah, init C files is just gonna loop through all files, and if the uh, F path that's returned by source path. Um, has a suffix uh, that is, right, the suffix is the thing that's passed, that is equal to lowercase s or uppercase s, um, then it's like, if it's not equal, it skips it. Um, but if it is, then this is all formatting stuff, um, right? If it's not an absolute path, then you're gonna prepin the source directory in front of it with this little make variable. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna print out the um, um, like source file path for all the C source files. And then when it calls it with init S files, um, so uh, it's just gonna do the same thing for all of the like, you know, architecture dependent or the, all the source files that are written in uh, assembly instead of C. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, pretty standard, uh, I suppose. Um, yeah, like, 
Um, that's all that that does. Um, you know, then you get into, um, you know, uh, so load comes next, but we're going to go through rules, which is at the very end. Um, so, like, that's what prints out all these, like, this comes from this source file, and then you just use the normal, like, uh, rules for compiling, for, you know, compiling this into this. Um, if you don't know anything about make files, this might seem a little confusing, but if you know a little bit, then you'll be like, oh, okay, they're just using default rules um, to compile C files. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. Um, but yeah, all the, like, uh, emit rules does... Okay, so the first thing that it does is it prints out, like, you know, all of the suffixes that we have compilation rules for. Um, and then it says, like, you know, how you... The default rules for transforming a C file into a .o file is just normal C. Um, same thing for normal S. Um... And then what it does is it loops through all files, takes the selected ones, and you know finds its source path. And then, um, you know, if there's a special make rule, then it calls this fun uh, this emit one rule. But none of these have special make rules, um, so it just prints off this like dot o from like dot s file. Um, so, whoops. Um, yeah, that's how you get like. You notice, like, ACPI, PCI comes from ACPI, PCI dot C with some prefix, you know. That's all that's doing. Um, and then, yeah, the load command um, prints is responsible, essentially, for... Um, so... Um, let's do, yeah, so it's responsible for the text between here and here, basically, in the make file. Um, so, yeah, you can see this matches up right here. So they're back to outputting the normal stuff right here and right here. Um, and basically, um, it, so, okay, just straight up puts out an all and then prints out every configuration that we have, which for us is just BSD. We're just going to make a single kernel called BSD. Um, and then you can see, like, for all the configurations, which for us, again, is just BSD, it's going to print out the name um, yeah, the name, and then its swap name is just generic for us, because we don't have any special, like, swap information, so we're just putting out, printing out swap generic, um, followed by system dep, um, and then because this is our first, right, it's the first and only configuration that gets print out, we also put a vers.o, right, just like this. And then we print out, you know, this sort of static stuff with the swap generic. We print out a swap generic, you know. Um, right, you can see this. It's, you know, if you have a different swap setup, then it'll print out those two things right there and right there. But for the most part, it's just swap generic. Um, yeah, so if, you know, yeah, it's going to be swap generic or like, if we had a special one, it would be like swap uh, BSD right there, but it's not, so we just have swap generic, um, which you can see right here and right here. And then we print out the normal C and two new lines and then new BSD, right? Normal C, new BSD, all this stuff and all this stuff, um, you know, if you really want to see all the details, you can, but the only really thing is like, you know, BSD gets put right there and right there and right there, and then like the configuration file that you pulled it from gets put right here. Um, so yeah, if you want to verify 
right? Swap name or name are the only things that really get put in there. And then the last component is just the last component of the configuration file. So yeah, um, and that's it for make make file. Um, make headers, um, so um, make headers is the function slash file that makes all of the header files in this directory, which is most of the files in this directory. Um, and those all come from file lines in the con you know configuration files or machine definitions files that uh, had needs flag or needs count um, and an option list. So when you have needs flag or needs count, it makes that like flat, um, it makes that flat list. Um, and uh, yeah, this basically just prints out a file that has a like capitalized version prepended with an in, right? So down here you can see like we, this is where this count name just changes this to like changes whatever was in the option to an uppercase uh, version of itself with an in in front. Um, so like if we look at, what was the one we saw? Um, I think it was HCI. Yeah. Um, so like it's just an N with a capitalized version of whatever was like whatever the options were. And then, you know, a one, right? So this is probably a needs flag one. So a one or a zero, depending on whether or not this option was in the select tab. Um, and option, I'm using the word option loosely, whether or not this thing was in the select tab. Um, and so, um, oh no, it doesn't need to be fgrep, it needs to be regular grep. Um, actually, I want two through nine. Um, and anything that ends in an h file. Yeah, so, yeah, I think this is the only one where. Like I'm sure that there's a needs count, um, but yeah, if we less, uh, this one probably had a needs count. Um, so yeah, the number of like pseudo terminals, I think is what this is. Um, so yeah, um, but it, um, I mean, let's go through it just a little bit, I guess. Um, real quick, hopefully, um, because make ioconf is the hardest one. Um, yeah, we just loop through all the non-hidden files uh, that have needs count or needs flag set, and then we call emit count on the flattened option version. And emit count just goes through that, and it, well, so it first opens a file with the same name.h as the first thing in the list. So, um, if you look like if you look in any of these header files, the first thing, so like let's look at audio or the first thing is going to be in audio. Um, so it opens up a file with the same name as you know the first head name or the name of the first element in the NV list. Um, opens it up for tries to open it up for reading first, and if it can't, then it goes immediately to writing. And it checks, it does some like checking to try and like not have to rewrite it if nothing's changed. But if anything has changed, then it just rewrites the whole thing um, with the NV list. And it just does define the count name and then the count, the NV int. So when we create this flat list, we store in the integer field of the NV list um, whether or not there is like the count of the device or whether or not it was included um, in the select tab. So that's it for make headers. Um, emit opt doesn't get used 
because we don't have any def options, right? So, um, let's so make swap does not do anything if you don't have something other than swap generic. So we're just going to totally skip it. You can look at it if you want to, but yeah. Um, let's move on to make IO conf because that is probably the um, hardest thing to understand or it's I don't know it's the thing that frustrated me the most because it doesn't really make sense um, and it's kind of a little bit wrong in a couple cases um, but for the most part it's actually not that bad so um, yeah the first thing it does is okay it sorts everything in packed in by CF order so that you know um, Oh, I should see if data. Um, so that like this array essentially goes in this order, right? You can see in these comments. Um, but the first thing that it does is it like, you know, emits this header, right? So it's just ordering by CF index of the uh, devices in packed. Um, and this like emit header just spits out this little comment and then if there's this ioconf.include thing then it will um, I think basically just write that into it but otherwise it just includes these two things and we don't have this so we just have those two lines which you can see right there um, and then we call it externs um, which is just gonna loop through you know, all bases. Um, oh, I thought that was called all dev bases. I'm pretty sure I've said that earlier, but it's actually just called all bases. Um, but yeah, and it checks if the dev base has any instances um, with, you know, any instances at all because we're passing wild here. If we pass like an actual number here, then it would check if it had, if it had any instances that were, uh, had that same number. Um, and if it doesn't, we skip this dev base. But the way that you check if you have any dev base, if the dev base has instances, is you check if the deva has instances. And the way that you check if the deva has instances, if you're wild, is you check if the deva just, if its instance pointer is non null. Um, otherwise, you loop through all of the deva's instances looking for one that has this same number that you pass. But that doesn't matter for us because these are just passing wild both times um, but yeah loop through all bases and we just print off right for every dev base we print off the a line that says extern struct CF driver and then the dev base name followed by underscore CD um, oh nope take me to the next new line or empty line and then right so once we're done with all the dev base, all or yeah, all dev bases, but it's called all bases. We go through all devas, um, any that have instances, right? Which means that, well, I already went over that. Um, we create an extern struct CF attach with the name of the attachment followed by CA. So in most cases, this like the driver name for the like driver name is the same as the or the base name is the same as the attachment name but there are a couple of exceptions so um, you can see there's just one com driver um, but there is a if I can ever get oh yeah so there's like both a com like there's a com PCI attachment um, there's a com PUC attachment. Um, there's a com card bus attachment. There's a com PCM CIA attachment. And there's a com ISA attachment. Um, so, yeah, there are some cases, mostly with just that one, I think, where, you know, you've got some differences. But, yeah, this is really pretty basic. 
Uh, emit Loke. Like, we did all of the hard work. Emit Loke is what gets called next, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we did all the hard work for this in Pact, and we just write out the, uh, like, locators that we packed into this locators uh, vec, right? This is, like, the number of them, and this is what they actually are. Um, so, um, yeah, it's just right here. I've already talked about it in the packed video, um, but yeah, that's where it gets put out. Um, and then there's this other stuff that it puts out, um, yeah, which I don't believe is even dependent on anything. Yeah, it just straight up prints all this other stuff. Um, it doesn't even depend on anything. Okay, this is the part that frustrates me because uh, it's just not right. Um, I don't think it matters much. So, okay, what, like, we're getting into um, the loc names. So, um, these are all of the locator names. And actually... So this is where it, like they originally get put out. Um, and this right here is the locator name pointer vector or array. Um, and so uh, I've copied and pasted and then sort of like rearranged all of this into something that's a little bit more easy to see uh, over here. Um, oops. So yeah, this loc names, and you can see I'm like down at the very bottom of the file down here. So I'm just gonna skip that closing brace. But yeah, I've labeled so that it's a little easier to count them. But like this is supposed to be a like sequence of pointers into this array. And like this over here, like you're supposed to, if you have any locator names, which you know is the same thing as having locators, um, you're supposed to have an index into this, which points you to all of the locator names in the correct order, terminated by a negative one of the ones up here. So right, if your locator name is just PHY, then you're gonna have a pointer to right here. And then it's gonna point to PHY and then a negative one. Or you could have it to any of these. The reason why there's so much duplication, um, well, okay, so the first thing is, they so these two functions up here add loc name loc namey and add loc name loc name i loc namey is what i call it and add loc name um those are just helper functions for emit loc names but emit loc names is kind of janky um so what we do with emit loc names what we're trying to do is right so anything that has a locator we want to create like a, or has any locators at all. We want to create like a list of index indices that like point to the locator names up here. Unfortunately, the way that they do this is weird. So we loop through all of the like things in packed, which seems fine so far, but then we loop through all of its parents and like, okay, if we've already set the parent loc name index, then we skip it. Um, and uh, like essentially um, for like each parent, we add all of the like names to either um, loc names or loc name pointer, whatever it may be. We don't have any duplicates in loc names because we check for that. But like if you have a lot of parents and like you're the first thing that gets you know, that calls on, you know, they're, you're the first thing that in packed that has any locators, um, you're gonna add the, like, to the loc name um, index array, you're gonna add the pointers to the same set of loc names a bunch of times for each parent. Um, and like, you know, you set added uh, appropriately, um, 
added as a local variable, so it gets initialized to zero, I guess. Um, oh no, you said it's to zero right here. Uh, yeah, because local variables aren't initialized to anything um, necessarily. So yeah, we add the locator index and we add the locator name if necessary. This add loc name will either add the locator name or it will return an index to it if it's already there. And then this just appends it to the end of like the list, right? So if we're right here and we call add loc namey, we're just gonna add whatever index it tells us to add. Um, and it starts with a negative one. But basically we associate for each device in packed, we store in its all of its parents' devices, um, the like p loc namey the loc name index that we should start from. And then uh, like if we have any locators, otherwise um, we just like use the previous uh, negative one. Um, and then we loop through, then we go through again and set our loc name index to the first parent's p loc name index. The problem with this is that like if somebody else like if some other device has set like our first parents p loc name index then we're going to use the locator names of that device instead and uh, this actually causes problems um it actually gets things wrong um so which i'll show you in a second but once we're done with that then like the rest of this is pretty easy we just like print off all of the loc names that we just created, which go right here. And then we print off like each device's uh, locator name index. So like, you know, that part is fine. Um, but you can see, um, I'll show you a couple examples. So um, the first thing to be at, um, WDC0 is Adipi SCSI and its locator name is channel. But then right after that there's a like WD star device whose first parent is WDC0 and its locator names are channel and drive. So if you look at the like um, okay so let's look at the locator name index for Adipi SCSI notice that these two are the same. Um, so if you look at 102 over here, this is 104, so this is 103, this is 102. 102 um, points to 3, which is just channel, right? So it gets it right for Adipi SCSI, but then for WD star, um, it's missing this drive one. It should say 3 and then 17. So that's not correct. Um, the other one is... Um, so you can see uh, BIOS 0 is the first thing that has main bus as a parent. So it sets its main bus's p loc namey to the one for APID, um, and which works fine for CPU 0, CPU star, IO API C star, um, EFI frame buffer, PV bus, those all work fine. But PCI star, its locator name is bus. So you can see that this uses 112 as its locator name index, um, as do all of all of these that have loc, you know, that are at main bus as the first parent. 112, 112, 112, 112. Um, so if we look at 112, that's just four followed by a negative one. Four is APID, but PCI needs to have Five followed by a negative one, um, and it just it doesn't because the code isn't correct. So anyway, um, end rant on <laughs> loc name like that whole thing, that whole kerfuffle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once we're done with that, everything's pretty smooth sailing. Um, PF data or emit PV just um, emits 
um, this parent vector. We did all the work for this in Pact. I mentioned it before. It's just looping through every device, finding its parents, or actually no, it's just looping through uh, the like parents thing that we created in Pact and just printing it out. Uh, as well as like a PV size variable, so for the size of it, which just uses parents.use that we created in Pact. Um, the CF data array um, is this thing that we were looking at earlier when I was showing you how this all gets messed up. And this is where we actually write various things. So we'll write our, like for each device instance, we write our like uh, attachment, right? This is like whatever the deva for this device instances, followed by underscore CA, the driver for it, which is just the dev base name, followed by underscore CD, the unit number, uh, the state, which is basically just whether it's a star um, or a normal one. Um, if it's disabled, then it'll say D star or D norm. Um, if we have locators, the values for the locators are right here with loc plus something. Um, otherwise, it's just loc. And then any flags that we passed when we like created our attachment line, which for almost all of them are zero. Um, yeah, uh, parents, um, this is like our offset into the parent vector array, um, which was set in packed. Um, this is our offset into the uh, locator name array, which like can be wrong, right? We were just going over that. And then um, this is the star unit. This is like unit ag again. I don't know like why it's in there twice, um, but it's just the unit number or um, yeah, it's just the unit number um, or like zero even if it's star um so yeah you have to check this to know if like this zero means like star or like actually zero um but yeah uh once we're done emitting that um and we also print out a comment line to make things a little easier um yeah and then um Yeah, for every device that um, can be at root, um, we put it in here. And then this, the rest of this is just like pseudo devices. So it's just all the pseudo devices followed by attach in these extern void lines, which, you know, is presumably how they uh, can attach, I guess, um, or like how you can attach to them, maybe. I don't know exactly. I just know like all that we really do uh, for these is we just loop through all pseudo and print out the base name followed by attach. Um, and then we print out all the pseudo device names um, right here. And then we initialize, uh, right? So this is where the like device U max field of a pseudo device comes in. For most of them, it's one, but for some of them, it's not. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it, right? That's the whole thing. Um, that's the whole program. We're done, right? The only thing that's left actually is option delta. Uh, sorry, I got a little excited. Um, but option delta just loops through all of the options essentially and prints them to um, the options file in here. So if you ever want to know what all the options for your kernel are, they're in there. Uh, actually, it checks to make sure that it hasn't changed before it prints them all out. But yeah, uh, that is it. That's the whole program. Um, I might make one more video on it just to sort of like see if I can make a 10 minute video that is an overview slash preview slash review of all of this. Um, but yeah, that's what config does when you want to compile a kernel. So yeah, if you made it this far, congratulations. Uh, you're my hero. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, 
I hope you learn something, you know, like genuinely, like that's what I want, you know, like if I learn something and I can, you know, help someone else learn it quicker, um, that's great. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, next, I think my next big project is going to be starting to look at uh, some device drivers like for the keyboard or a mouse um, and seeing if we can't understand some of that um, and that'll probably take us into like some of the core kernel uh, systems a little bit too but you know it is what it is it's time to start digging around in the kernel so yeah uh, now at least we know you know how the make files work, everything that happens when you, you know, compile a kernel. Um, that's what we're shooting for. Shooting to understand the OpenBSD kernel. So, uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. See you later. Peace.